This is an overview of Quality Control in Cloud Suite Industrial, also known as CSI and Sightline. Quality Control in CSI is split between four primary areas, inbound inspection, work in process inspection, final or customer inspection, and QC Enterprise. The three inspection areas work in similar fashion, identifying what needs to be inspected, when to do the inspection, who should do the inspection, which tools or gauges should be used for the inspection, and what to do with the results of the inspection, also known as disposition. The QC Enterprise can work in conjunction with the inspections, but it can also work on its own to manage the overall quality process. It can deal with policies, documents, and procedures to help you meet specific business standards. These quality standards may range from the general ISO 9000 or 9001 series, Aerospace AS9100, Medical ISO 13485 or 21 CFR Part 11, Automotive TS16949, and any others or any other combination of these that you want to define. Please note, using the software alone does not guarantee any industry certification. Each business must define their own policies and make sure that these policies meet those industry standards. But the tools in CSI can help store and track much of those requirements and help manage or notify you when something is outside of those procedures. Let's take a look at inspections. It starts with defining which items need inspection. From here, you define the tests that make up each inspection and where the inspection happens. At purchase receiving, in process in a job, before it goes out to a customer, or even inbound RMA. If you select job for in process inspection, you'll need to identify the operation for the needed tests. And the same job can have multiple tests per operation and have tests at multiple operations, giving you full control. If you select Supplier for Purchase Receiving Inspection, you can specify the specific supplier or specific tests needed for all suppliers. You make that choice. You can identify various different notes and files for each inspection. Another thing to note, there are many user-defined codes and parameters throughout the quality system. That provides an easy way to configure your exact needs. A feature to help deploy QC quickly and consistently is an option of identifying a test family. This provides you an option of defining a test just once and using it for similar items instead of requiring you to define the same tests over and over again. You define the frequency of inspections from each supplier. Maybe you have some that are certified and those inspections are already pre-approved. Or you have others that every third receipt or over a period of time, additional inspections are required. This provides you with the flexibility to meet your demanding needs. You define what needs to be tested, whether they are specific measurements with min and max tolerances or visual characteristics. Maybe you're receiving items from a painting subcontract or an internal operation and you need to check for scratches. You define them. For each test, you define the min, the max, and nominal dimensions. You define the severity levels, the gauge groups, equipment, and test methods. And speaking of gauges, you have full control over the definition of gauges, gauge groups, as well as their calibration status. You can see that quickly identified in green and red. You'll see who's performed that calibration, whether it was an internal employee or an external vendor. You'll also see where that gauge is used. If a gauge is out of calibration, you can quickly see which items will be or may have been affected by that. Let's briefly review what happens during a purchase receipt inspection. When the PO is received, the items are moved to a QC inspection location. You define that location. Whether that inventory is netable or not is your call. You determine the sample size needed for each inspection. This might be every item, especially for those that are serial controlled, or if you're receiving a quantity of 1,000, maybe you only want to inspect 10 or 100. You determine that sample size. Here you perform the tests, you record the results, and identify any defects. Then you disposition the materials. 
Any rejected items can be sent to an MRR for material review. You see that five items were accepted and five were put on hold. In the MRR, you see the quantity under review. You can add additional descriptions and reasons for the defect, all definable by you. You can optionally tie this to a corrective action to prevent this from happening again. This is also where you can return rejected items to the vendor for credit or replacement. That vendor RMA will also be tied to the rejection and MRR in any corrective actions you've created. That gives you a complete view from defining the QC test needed for an item to the gauges and equipment used for the test, the test results, the review of the rejections, any needed corrective actions, and the return of the rejected items back to the vendor. The in-process inspection is similar to a receiving inspection, except the disposition is back to a job, not to a vendor or PO. Here you will have the inspection test for each operation you've told the system you need one. The test definition, the gauge selection, test reporting, MRR, corrective actions are all very similar to the receiving inspection, and you decide if the rejected items need to be reworked or scrapped. The customer inspection is also very similar, except the disposition is with a customer order and shipment. With the comprehensive quality control features available in CSI, you are in complete control of what needs to be inspected. Who needs to inspect it? Which gauge or equipment should be used for the inspection? How items are dispositioned? And bringing it full circle, what corrective actions are needed to prevent these problems from happening again? That's a quick overview of CSI quality. Thanks for watching.